Dr. Ton Borioko has never had any more troublesome patients. その後の経過はどうですか、崎坂さん。いえ、別だ。これといって問題もなく。So, are we seeing it from her perspective because she isn't a blob of goo? Well, not goo, you know, just a mass of blobby flesh. His voice is hard and flat, his words toss carelessly into the air. It's like he's speaking to himself in an empty room. Rieko is a surgeon, not a psychiatrist, but she, even she can sense the thickness of the wall he has erected between himself and the world. Oh, I imagine there's plenty of all three. <laughs> Especially the latter. While Saga Saga appears to be looking at Ryoko, his gaze is actually aimed a fraction down and to the side. He's only superficially engaged in the conversation, when in truth it does not interest him in the slightest. Perfect rejection. Realizing that she can't interview him like this, Ryoko sighs and sets her chart aside. Sakisaka-san, you have to be able to get the treatment of 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 the treatment. I wonder if his perception. Well. At the same time, it's like they mentioned, you know, after the accident, he was like freaking out at his friends. So I assume that those crazy hallucinations he keep, pretty much sees the world as is probably a result of the accident and not the surgery, I'd imagine. Treatment of subnormal hematoma, although the, through the use of micro machines, a procedure available in Japan exclusively here at the university, has been the only way to save Sagasaka from Minori from a cerebral contusion that could have been fatal. I mean, given、uh, the state of his life, I think he probably would have been better off, you know, not surviving the accidents. Sai Sentan de Aru to you Kotoa. まだまだデータの出揃っていない危険性の伴う治療法だったという意味でもありますそうでしょうねサガサガファミナーの lips を twisted slightly in what might be a bitter or mocking smile but it is gone before Rio Kyo can discern its meaning 普通こんなことを言って脅かすのは医者として問題なんですが施術後に重大な脳障害をきたしたケースも報告されているんです。予後の経過には十分に注意しなければなりません。先週の MRI はどうでした ?MRI、マグネティック・レズ。Uh, resonance im imaging is a way for doctors to examine the brain in detail without opening the patient's skull. Surprised by Sakisaka's uncommon technical knowledge, Ryoko recalls his profile. Wait, really? <laughs> Surprise! How do you know about MRIs? Is that what MRI actually stands for? I've heard the term before, but not what it actually means. So, you are not a more. You shall not a more that t i m What time period does this take place in anyway? Sensei が心配しているような脳機能不全は画像診断だけでも十分にわかるはずですよね。Not、いいえ。Can I repeat that? <laughs>、um, I don't know.、Uh, uh, what does that do? Oh, there we go. 先生が心配しているような脳機能不全は画像診断だけでも十分にわかるはずですよね。あ、uh, wait what? You pause? 先生が心配しているような脳機能不全は画像診断だけでも十分にわかるはずですよね。何か異常はあったんですか。No wonder I accidentally skipped it. You did a pause. There was nothing, not a slightest hint of abnormal activity. For a procedure with such a low rate of success, the results have been nothing short of miraculous. However, something still bothers Ryoko. She can't shake the feeling that he's hiding something beneath his god aid exterior. Some terrible weight on his soul, perhaps. Seriously, why didn't he just go ahead and say, I see the world as all these mass blobs of flesh and shit? 
I mean, granted, he'd probably not tell them that because they'd pretty much be like, okay, we're gonna have you in the hospital permanently. That's obviously why he's probably not telling them, which is really stupid on his part because, seriously, you really need to freaking, you know, uh, inform them about that because that's, that's a pretty big deal. But if it's an inorganic problem, then there's nothing she can do as long as he refuses to explain it.大丈夫ですよ、先生。現に僕は今こうして病院の外でも何不自由なく生活しています。どんな相談にも乗ってもらえるんですかええ、もちろん。先生。あれから王外教授についてはI think I saw that name mentioned on the Steam page when looking for the characters. I think her character specifically. As before, the patient is inquiring about someone whom he has no business knowing. Ongai教授のことは、あの、あなたの治療とは何の関係もないでしょう信頼しろと言った矢先に、いきなり隠し事ですか? Ryoko is used to patients treating her with hostility. Some degree of paranoia is natural when dealing with a person whose mistakes could kill you. In Sagasaka, however, she doesn't see the anxiety that other patients exhibit. His Zemna is perfectly calm, almost like a detective questioning a suspect. <laughs> I Rick answers smoothly, her earlier hesitation gone, having decided to as at the outset to lie. She has no trouble doing so with a straight face. I mean, how does she look to him, though? It's just like... I mean, he, he doesn't see her like this. She has a mass of flesh. お知り合いですか教授は今失踪中なんです。知ってましたかいいえ。Rekka did mention that those two characters are apparently uh, related. A relative really considers this with a frown. I, I, I mean, like I said, I know the big plot twists in this, but I don't know anything else, so I'm like, I have no idea what's going on here. How will this develop? Ryoko replies, remembering that she just claimed to have had no contact with a man. なるほど。そんなことが噂になる程度には、王外教授は有名人だったわけですね。なのに、誰も彼が大学を辞めた理由を知らないと。Rick of all silent, knowing that this isn't a topic she can brush away with a smile. Sakasaka seems to have finally grasped her mood. However, as his strangely stiff tone softens a little. Sensei,僕はどうしても大外教授に会わなきゃならないんです。彼がいなくなったせいで、行く当てがなくなり困っている子がいるんです。力になってもらえませんか?Who the hell is Dr. Ogai? I mean, just rhetorical question here, don't answer that. I'm <laughs> just like... Because... Like, like I said, I know the big plot twist, and that's all I know. I know, like, how it ends, but that's it. It's 
It's, I just find that weird, isn't it? Reading a story, knowing how it ends, but nothing else. So it keeps you intrigued, because you're like, how is it going to lead up to that point? How is the story going to unravel? It's like, you know, uh, I don't know. I've never fully played for Five Nights at Seven, but everyone knows that plot twist stabbed um, like somewhere midway in the game. So it kind of takes away the impact of it. It because like it's so well known that even if you haven't played it, you probably know what I'm talking about there. And it's just like so it doesn't have as much an impact. Like I said, with that comparison with Persona Three, it's like I knew how it ends, but you know, the journey which is fitting because that's. I play the FES version, and you know the main story is called the journey. So you know, going through the story is like you know, it really kind of builds things up. And even if you know how it's ultimately going to end, you still you know you're along for the journey. Strap in, motherfucker! You're gonna get some experience with this story, or whatever. I don't know what the hell I'm trying to get across. It's like, even if you know the ending of a story doesn't completely take away from the story itself, because, I mean, you know, just knowing the ending doesn't really, you know, tell you the whole story, does it? Anyways. Also, you know, just because I know how it ends, don't spoil anything in the comments or anything. Because, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Though she makes it sound like the most obvious thing in the world, the suggestion is actually a gamble. For a guy Masahiko's disappearance becomes a police matter, then the university will be investigated. Everyone who was involved in the incident will be at a risk of exposure. And of course, that includes Ryoko herself. You know, I know I keep getting off track here and breaking up like the fact that I know how it ends. It's like, despite the fact that I know how it ends, I'm not gonna like, you know, like commentate in a way that shows that I know how it ends if that makes any sense <laughs> anyways and of course that includes Ryoko herself she knows however that Sagasaka is unlikely to go to the police first of all his excuses obviously lie they already made sure that a guy had no relatives who might come looking for him which is why they could bury the truth of what happened but then, how did Sakisaka, a mere patient, learn about a guy? Sakisaka-san,私の知っている範囲のことは喜んでお教えします。ですが、大外教授は今年の4月に辞表を出して、以後は何の恩心もないんです。Welcome an update, bro. Really, it's the 21st of March. Now oh, let me check. I've got to check my uh, schedule via looking here. Okay. We are blowing Rune Factory tomorrow, then doing for Yeah, it'd be the 26th, I think, where it would be when I upload first part of this Let's Play then. So it wouldn't be quite in April, but pretty close. <laughs> Expecting resistance, Roku is surprised when Zuggy Zuggy backs down. She's still worried about his condition, and the mysterious link between him and the guy is only making her more uneasy. But as long as he doesn't open up to her, there's nothing she can do. After a brief pause, Ryoko writes, Progress good on Sakisaka's chart for today. I don't think progress is very good there. Sakisaka-san, so it's the next week's report, but I'm the same as the same time. Before she can finish, Sakisaka is gone. Welcome to the world of flesh. It looks like someone sprayed the walls with pig guts from ceiling to floor. It, it's made me think of Silent Hill 4. You know, in the apartment, uh, right at the end of the game where the walls become all red and fleshy. Not as bad as this, but you know, it is pretty, you know, similar in a way. What color should the walls of a hospital be? White, of course, and to the creatures of rotten flesh shambling around me, I'm sure this hallway looks just as white as it should. I know intellectually that the walls are white, I know that the flesh beasts are really human. I'm the one with the problem, and it's because I've accepted this that I'm able to lead something approaching a normal life. Well, at least he's, you know, 
come to terms with it. It's like, okay, this is your life now. And recognize that these horrible fleshy monsters aren't actually monsters and are in fact people. So, you know, don't freak out too much about that. Even if my university's medical department is nowhere near as good as T's university, I'm still a medical student specializing in neurology. I have a basic idea of what has happened to me, though it's hard to believe. Can you imagine him as a surgeon in this condition? That would be a very bad idea. <laughs> this isn't a pathological condition, it's probably some form of agnosia, unlike anything that has ever been studied before. The flesh beast called Tanabo Ryoko said that all patients that develop neurological disorders have to receive the same treatment I did. So I guess I'm just an all failure. It's meant to laugh and that know-it-all doctor's face. That said, I don't blame the doctors who operate on me. After all, I do owe them my life. I know as well as anyone how low the chance of success was, and then I had no other hope of survival. Man, I is... That is some interesting art. I mean, why is it all pitch black here? <laughs> it's like no stars in the sky. That'd be interesting. Would the moon look like a fleshy mass as well? Would the sun look like some shining tumor? It was unlucky, that's all there is to it. I mean, I was unlucky. Point is that my condition isn't treatable. Just like someone adapting to hearing aid or wheelchair, I have no choice but to adapt to this nauseating scenery. Oh, cause like... I don't know. Schizophrenia, you know, has like, you know, hallucinations of sorts and stuff like that, but I don't think this would be anything like that, to such a extreme degree. But I wonder if they gave him, like, treatment that they'd give for schizophrenia would have helped that all or not. Of course, it's hard. It wasn't easy to resign myself to this fate. Did I... Anytime I go on a, round, a little short ramble like that, I always forget if I've read it all. Adapting to a hearing aid or a wheelchair, I have no choice but adapt to this nauseating scenery. But now there's more than just a spare. Even for me, there is a glimmer of hope. Keep my eyes on my feet, I hurry home. I live in a quiet suburban neighborhood in a house that's much too large for me alone. My parents, even unluckier than I was, died in the accident three months ago. Couldn't even go to the funeral for being in intensive care. Had to sell my father's business, but at least that left me with a house and enough money to live on for a while. Of course I'm sad, but the accident took more from me than my parents. In fact, being on my own has probably saved me. Yeah, it probably would have been uh, even worse. Living with uh, all the people that just resemble fleshy blob monsters, and you can barely understand a thing they're saying. If they were still alive, my parents would never have allowed me to live with some strange girl. Uh, and that, I suppose, as well. Because... Okay. As I open the door, a bright voice greets me from the kitchen. The voice is beautiful and clear as a bell. Human. Sweet sound washes the days. Um, I've, I've never been able to remember how to pronounce that word. Uh, only whatever from my memory. You didn't say sire. <laughs> Even the patter of feet coming down the hallway is music to my ears. Nowhere else in the city can I hear such footsteps. Only in this house with sire am I so privileged. So the only person that doesn't look like a fleshy blob monster to him, I guess. Sorry. Today I was going to go to the hospital. In her smile and the inquisitive tilt of her head is everything that I have lost. Since my accident, this girl is the only person I've met. Perhaps the only person in the entire world who does not trigger my cognitive disorder. Isn't that a bit strange, though? I would imagine... I mean, if I was in this position, I'd question that. True, her skin seems too white, and the color of her eyes and hair is probably different in reality, but even so, her form is undeniably human. And it's not just her appearance and her voice, either. As I bend down to take off my shoes, Saya wraps her arms around my neck and pulls me gently into her chest. 
Her skin feels truly human, not cold or slimy, and from her hair wafts a sweet feminine fragrance. But all the world's only sire is pleasing to my five senses. And what's more, she smiles at me, embraces me. She knows that she is my salvation, and for some reason is happy that I her. If I had not met Sire, if I had been all alone in this twisted, filth-ridden world, but no doubt have succumbed to madness. There's no exaggeration to say that Sire alone is keeping me alive. ふみのりのパンご飯作ってるの昼間テレビで作り方やってたからそうか楽しみだなもうちょっと時間かかりそうなの待っててくれるいいよじゃあ僕は今の続きをやってる After I see the humming sire off to the kitchen, I step into the living room. I realized one day that if the natural colors of the world were sickening, all I had to do was paint over them with colors that seemed pleasant. But so, uh, uh, this side of the room is looking quite different this side, so is that what he means? Kinda makes it look, uh... Like old paper, you know, that's kind of worn out and kind of changing color. I went to the hardware store and bought every color of paint I could find, and then Sarah and I tried different combinations until we found one that works. As I painted the bedroom from ceiling to floor, I was finally able to get my first good night's sleep since the accident. When we first started on the living room, Sire, unsure what to do with the curtains, just painted carefully around the windows without a moment's hesitation. I tore the curtains down and painted over the glass itself. There'll never be anything out there that I'd want to see, and as long as we keep the storm shutters closed, the neighbors probably won't think anything of it. As she enters the living room with a tray of food, Sire sniffs the air. Does food also resemble the mass of flesh and gore? Now that you mention it, I suppose the smell of paint thinner must be building up in this closed room. Doesn't really bother me though, there are far worse smells outside. Doesn't make me think of Bob Ross, it's just like, ah, oh, it's like, you know, you gotta be careful with paint thinner, man, it, it smells horrible. <laughs> make you the most unpopular person in the house, but then there's only two people living there. <laughs> It's a good thing that he keeps voice acting like that when actually click too quickly. Unless, you know, another character has a line, then he just skips it. So I set the food on the table. Unfortunately, neither its color nor its smell is at all appetizing. Not that food elsewhere is any different. It, it, why is a sigh as well? He's not even saying that. He's just, you know, doing the internet pass, you know, just like thanks for the things. I mean, I suppose he's thanking her for the food there as well, but it's not saying it by name. As has become routine, I seal myself and methodically transport the food into my mouth. The taste is as gut-wrenching as I expected. But it's not Sai's fault. I'm sure she makes it exactly like the cooking show said, so that my taste buds can't accept it. She asked hesitantly. Mm. Mm -hmm. Lying what makes I happy, she knows about my condition. I mean, what if his senses are completely reversed and something like, you know, dog shit would actually taste delicious to him now? He's like, oh, that's just nasty. Sorry,いつも。せっかく作ってくれたのに。いいのよ。こうやっていろいろ試していけば。what is this music? It's like... I know, it's... Vaguely uh, John Carpenter-esque. I feel. Sort of. A dude and then he got la la la... Na na na... Occasionally. Like that. Strange. I wonder what it's doing modally. I mean, I got my guitar right next to me, but I uh, don't want to waste too much time getting off track here. In my current state, eating is nothing more than an unwelcome duty. 
As much as I hate it, so I need food to survive. If I stay alive, then perhaps one day, as science says, I'll be able to taste something delicious again. I met Saya, didn't I? Are we gonna get a flashback to how they met? Probably. In all the time we've been together, Saya's never once eaten with him. I don't know why she refused to do so. It makes me a little sad. Still, I'm not about to push the issue, not when she's putting up with all the problems I have. So, I heard you once again. Dr. Ogai Masahiko, his size father and her only living relative. Sai has asked me to unravel the mystery of his disappearance. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to that's the connection there, I guess, between those two characters. So. I expected Sai to be a little more disappointed. Shinpaja Nayo Kai, Otosano Koto. Uh huh. So you like it, Nayo. Sai responds with an unreadable expression. She gives a little shake of her head, so then smiles at me once again. Arigato, Minori. Watashi no tame ni iroiro to. I thank you for the meal and set my chopsticks down next to the perfectly clean plate, as wretched as the taste was. Thinking of the care that Sai put into it gave me the strength to finish every bite. Here's a thought. Have you sees everyone except Sai? As fleshy monstrosities. What about himself? Catch himself in a mirror is like rah, 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 rah. It's like he just like pulls out his hand and he's like rah. Yeah, ever since I moved in it's been like having my own wife. Bit of an uh, odd way of seeing it. It looks like uh, she's a bit too young for that. Sire. Why are you so good to me? Is this truly what you want? What am I, that you can give yourself to me, body and soul? In this merely sim is this merely sympathy? Do you pity me, the exile from society? Is that enough for you to surrender yourself to such mad desire? Are you so wanted? Wonder. Sire is here. She is with me now. Only in this moment in her is her existence certain. Only when I am joined with her can I believe. No matter what cruel fate might await me, sire, there is nothing I fear more than losing you. Minori, you're I realize that my cheeks are wet with tears. How do you do that, sire? Why did you come to me here? Minori... I don't know. I don't know. I'm only going to be in the middle of you. I'm going to be in the middle of you. I wrap my arms tight around her, praying that our bodies will melt together and never again be apart. Sayo whispers into my chest. I guess this is what, uh, the steam, you know, uh, listed things means by partial nudity because, of course, they, uh, this version leaves out of those scenes. I'm gonna assume this probably leads into one of those scenes, but it's probably not going to because, uh, that's edited out. Nothing. She says softly, gazing up into my eyes. Wait, she said. Sayamo, 
Yeah, it's already built to you. I think that is... Because it just makes me think of, uh, what was that? What was that anime called? Welcome to the NHK. A NH... What's the NHK? Whatever. Has a really nice, but very heavily melancholic song called Itari Boshi, which means Welcome to Loneliness. Also, I noticed she's referring to herself in third person there. The sorrow in her voice resonates with my own. There is a deep loneliness in her eyes. Loneliness from which now springs boundless affection. That's why I don't have a single person in this world. I just want to give you a chance. I love you. Now I know, no matter what horrors this world unleashes upon me, all I've ever need is silence. I mean, really, does he not question this at all? It's like... I mean... Whatever. He always determined to talk to him today. Nothing will happen as long as she hesitates. It will only prolong her suffering. Time has come to show courage once again. Man, I get it. I mean, it showed that there were a lot of CGs, but we're getting a lot of CGs right from the get-go. I mean, I know it's apparently short, but I don't know how short it actually is. Here's for period on first days is biology. This is our one chance to see for Minori. As a required course, we have many students. Lecture is held in a large hall that can seat well over 200. Since the room is usually only half full, it's really difficult for Yo to find the seat she wants. Yo prefers to sit near the center where it's easiest to hear the professor. Most of the students congregate in this area for the same reason. Fuminora usually sits beside her, though given the ambiguous state of the relationship, she knows better than to take this for granted. Still, she tries to save a seat whenever possible. I've just now come to a realization. You know, how I was like, <laughs> early on in this recording, I was like, you know, at least we don't freaking have to have another damn school in this, but technically we do it, except it's college. I mean, that's better. I mean, for the longest time we've gone through all these, it's like, why is the high school? Upgrade the freaking college already. <laughs> Classroom isn't crowded today, so Yo is able to set her bag on the seat next to her without inconveniencing anyone. And once again, let me check. Did I read all that? But when the professor arrives at the usual time to start class, there is still no sign of Fuminori. After waiting for about ten minutes, Yo scans the room fitfully. Fuminori is there, sitting alone in the far back corner. Did he miss Yo when he came in? No, he couldn't have. Besides, no serious student would willingly sit so far away from the front. Feeling miserable, Yo slides her bag back over to herself. Fuminori is out the door. The moment class ends, Yo barely manages to catch up to him before he disappears down the hallway. It's weird. <laughs> it's just like he's going by last name here. Or is Fuminori. No, Fuminori can't be his last name because they said this. Uh, 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 what, was the, what was the last name again? <laughs> Can you repeat that? Sakisaka-san? Yes, yeah, Sakisaka, that's his family name. So, be his last name. Remember at the sound of his name, he would think she just screamed at him. Nanika. Yeah, it probably sounded like... Or something like that to him. He turns to ask her and ask reluctantly. Now that they are face to face, Yo is painfully aware of how much weight Fuminara has lost. Sunken eyes and protruding cheekbones are a far cry from the features familiar to her. She wonders whether he's under a lot of stress, or perhaps not getting enough nutrition. Maybe it's both. Maybe it's more than you could possibly imagine. He definitely looks more tense than he should, afraid even. Of what she can't imagine, his eyes move stressfully from point to point, and he refuses to look Yo in the eye. It hurts to see from an area this way. What could have changed him so? Well, what could have changed him so? You, I mean, you know about the bloody accidents. Today, she reminds herself, rekindling the flame of courage in her heart. Wait. 
what, what I forget what it's called, but you know, that is written differently. What was that thing called when they kind of like changed it a bit like that? Whatever. Why? Why on today? Why not all the other words? Why is it just this one specifically? Strange. Maybe it's like emphasizing today. The courtyard is empty and silent. No one is willing to sit and chat in the cold November air. Honest, Nani. Don't you remember? You almost blurts the question but manages to keep her composure. Sakisaka-san, Saikin, Choto, Yosuga, Hendes. Mitete, Shinpai, Ninarimas. So, come on, eh? Ma, I'm not many out to Adakara. He smells like it's nothing, but even that seems forced. He's even standing precisely one beat that base farther away from her than he used to. Yo manages to keep from flinching at the harshness of his tone. Rather an answer from Minori grinds his toe into the, with the dead grass at his feet. Fearing that her determination might flag, Yo lets the words come as they may. Wait, his toe? Is he not wearing shoes? どうしようもないものを無理して壊れそうになるほど頑張って我慢してるみたいに今の咲坂さんはそう見えます。Fuminori mutters through clenched teeth, no longer trying to deny it or change the topic. This is an even clearer sign, signal of rejection than his prior evasiveness. But Yo's determination is strong. Today, at least, she won't back down. She implores, trying to convey the sincerity of her feelings for him. And that's how she looks. Could probably hear my niece in the background there. Possibly. You can no longer stop the words pouring from her lips. She fears that if she does not unleash her feelings now, they will be lost forever. Why do they, uh, I mean, when they showed the first one, it's like, okay, so that's how she looks, and then they change it to this one again. I'm like, make up your mind, how does she actually look through his eyes right now? Fumidara shouts, silencing Yo's entry. En she promised herself that she wouldn't back down, but Fumidara's expression is terrible enough to shatter her resolve. The look in his eyes is not anger or any other warm-blooded emotion. It is hate, murderously cold hate. So I have He remembers. He remembers and still he has treated her so coldly. There's all the answers she needs. If it were to stab any deeper, she might very well die. Man, the pretender is an unlikable piece of shit. I mean... Sympathize with his situation, but man, he's he's become an absolute prick. Bukakiminokoto,Doriwaketokbetsinishkishtakotonantenakata.Kiminikoyo
僕はあんたのことが大嫌いだ顔も見たくない Man, what a horrible thing to say. I imagine that isn't his true feelings before the accident. He probably didn't hate her. He probably, maybe he didn't have feelings for her even before that. So it's like, just like, you know, it's like, I don't hate you or anything, but I'm, you know, not interested in you romantically or whatever. But now that he sees everything the way he does now, he's like, You disgust me. You, everyone just looks like blobs of messy flesh and gore. Don't cry, he tells herself, but too late to stop the tears pouring from her eyes. How must that look through his eyes, though? もう二度と会いたくないっていうのは無理だね。同じ学校に通ってるんだし。だからせめて、今後は僕に声をかけないでくれないか、oh. 目障りなんだよ、つくづく。Let's backtrack a little bit, shall we? <laughs> When was our last line? Um. Uh. What's that? Okay. I mean, if that's actually how she sounds to him, sure, it's weird and kind of like has a weird effect going on to it. But it's not like, you know, ah, my ears are bleeding kind of voice. Like it was at the start when the voice was like, <laughs> when it was like, un uh, you know, incoherent gibberish that we couldn't really understand because of how weird the effect on the voices were. Your whispers in shock and despair. Oh, to which familiarity twists his lips into a malevolent smile. Look at this prick. You're really losing your sympathy points, man. Kimi sa, sko si wa atamo hiya shita hoga yo katta nda yo. Do se Omi ya Koji ni keshi kake rarete sono ki ni natte ta dake nanda ro? Jibun hitori de nobose te rebun ni wa katte dake do sa. Tanin o maki komu natte yun da. That's all Yo can take. Even after shedding tears in front of him, she actually refused to let him hear her cry. Any disgrace would be preferable to breaking down here. So she runs, fleeing breathlessly from the courtyard when Fuminori's cold smile at her back. God, Fuminori's a dick. I mean, a get is, you know. The accidents, you know. It probably. I mean. Along with his, you know,、uh, perception of the world being completely different, he's like all these horrible hallucinations. I'd imagine that the accident did irreparable brain damage as well, and that's probably altered his personality. Maybe. Because, I don't know, it feels like from his friends' reactions, it kind of it seems like it implies that he was like. You know, a fairly decent person before the accident and friendly enough, but now he's completely changed. Omi was the first to catch sight of you and Fuminora leaving for the courtyard. It's like one of the、uh, things on the Steam page mentioned, like,、uh, or maybe it was one of the reviews I know. Just like,、uh, mentions like the various themes in the story. One was like, Psychopathy and stuff like that, so maybe that was in reference to、uh, Fuminori. He's become a bit sociopathic. I mean, how much of that is from the hallucinations making him want to cut off contact with the rest of the world because of how it looks to him? And how much of that is to do with the accidents altering his mind? <coughs> Omi was the first to get sight of Yo and Fuminora leaving for the courtyard. Reluctant to interrupt them, but still unwilling to leave them alone, she and Koji ended up watching the whole thing from the shadows. I do. Throughout the exchange, Omi was clearly itching to jump out and punch Fuminori in the face. Man, that would look terrifying, wouldn't it, because of how he. all the hallucinations? On her temper, Koji kept firm hold of her until the very end. Arm until the end. If he hadn't, she might very well have done it. 
I mean, honestly, someone should just put him out of his misery. Is the likelihood of him ever getting better is probably non-existent, is it? I mean, in his current predicament, it feels like you know, just someone put him out of his misery, man. <laughs> this feels kind of wrong, isn't it? It's like, oh yeah, kill that man. It's like. I don't know, it's like a kind of condition, you know, like when someone's like, you know, irreparable brain damage and stuff, like after suffering multiple heart attacks and stuff, and they turn off life support and stuff like that. I mean, in that case, they don't necessarily kill them, they just like, you know, just kind of let it play out. They don't actually be like, okay, gonna inject you so you die by this or something like that, but, you know, he seems like he should, you know, uh, just like, yeah. That's no way to live, is it? In that condition. Very dark. We know there's an every seeming act of willpower can leave well once more empty courtyard, but a bit of taste in his mouth will not go away. Even Koji cannot forgive for Minor's treatment of Yo. However, the first thing that he feels is confusion, not anger. So yeah, that indicates his personality has drastically changed since the accidents as well. Koji has known Fuminora since long before college. Fuminora was never this cruel before. There's no question now that the accident changed him. ねえ、コージ。このまま放っておくつもり放っておきたくないにしたって、俺たちに何ができる。のぞ君よりマシなことよ。I mean, shouts her face red with fury. あたし、さきさかくんに一言言ってやらなきゃ気が済まないわ。それで筑波の気が晴れるってもんでもないだろうに。だったら私のキーだけでも晴らすわよ。You and Omi are best friends, just like Koji and Fuminora, in fact. It was the relationship between Koji and Omi that brought the other two together. Omi's anger is only natural. <coughs> Damn this cough. This is why I was like reluctant to start this let's play. Because I'm like, ah, still got a cough, man. Atashi,さきさかくんと二人だけで話してみたいわ。コージはついてこなくてもいいから。本気かよ。その代わり、ヨウのことを見ていてあげて。あの子、多分親族を傷ついてるから。泣き終わった後で誰かの優しさが必要になると思う。なあ、それって俺とお前の役割が逆じゃないのか？私みたいな性格だとね。慰め役は無理。励ますつもりで余計に傷跡広げちゃうのがオチなのよ。なるほど、